All right, welcome back to Lag Demon Programming. Uh, in this video series, we're going to start talking about Unreal Engine 4 and C++ and uh, how to go about setting up the project uh, and getting things squared away and then a little bit about the uh, architecture of Unreal Engine 4 and, and how things are kind of organized. And then we're going to dive into some programming. We're going to start off simple and move up to more and more sophisticated things, but I always try to keep everything simple. <clears throat> and I'll, uh, I'll explain that as we go through. So I want to start this off with a, a very short presentation, just explaining some things about Unreal Engine 4. Um, in C++, uh, you're really creating things for use by designers. So you're creating the tools that the designers need to glue the game together. And the way that's done is through Blueprint. And we'll be creating functions and objects and many other things that can be used in Blueprint. Uh, and C++ code can call Blueprint. Blueprint can also call into your C++ code. Either way, uh, we'll be creating properties uh, that the designer can use uh, in editing the and setting up the scene and setting up your particular code. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll add more complex functionality uh, and time-critical functions in C++. Uh, in this course, I'm going to be using Unreal Engine 4.27.2 and Visual Studio Code, Reaper, Blender, GIMP, uh, the usual uh, programs. If you don't have all these, that's fine. The main thing you need is uh, Unreal Engine and either Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, and you should be fine. We're also going to be working with some plugins. One of the one of my favorite plugins is Gameplay Abilities. Uh, we'll be talking about how to use this, uh, and I'll go into more detail about what it does. But basically, it's a it's a toolkit for giving your character abilities, such as shooting lightning bolts at the enemy or firing a gun or whatever it may be. And it's broken down into tasks and attributes and effects. And these, how these interact with each other determines how, how well your character can do the particular ability and, and what, how it affects the other players and himself or the gameplay in general. Um, reuse, code reuse. Um, it, it can be done. It's not as simple as just loading a library. Uh, if you created a bunch of C++ code for a game and you want to use it in another game, you, there's literally some manual editing that you have to do, and that's because of naming conventions and the way the internal reflection system works in Unreal Engine. Uh, it's not difficult, uh, but if you have a lot of files, it can be a little tedious. Uh, we'll do an example of it at some point in time during the course, and I'll show you how that works. This is kind of a top-level view of, of how the engine works. Uh, at the very topmost, you have the game, the game mode, and the game state. Uh, and these are really the, the objects that control the overall gameplay. Uh, a, uh, a player controller is then spawned into the game, and that uh, player controller takes possession of a pawn, or it could be an AI controller that takes possession of a pawn. And it's the player controller that controls the HUD and user input and the player camera and all of that. We'll be uh, working with the multiplayer in this series. And uh, so we'll be dealing with a server and multiple clients. And in general, uh, the, the server has certain responsibilities. And really, it is the server in a multiplayer environment that has authority. And we'll talk about how authority works within the gameplay system. But basically, we don't want rogue clients to be able to come in and alter the game uh, just because they're, you know, a client. Uh, it's only the server. The server has full authority over the game, and, and the clients uh, uh, can't affect game state except going through the server. Oh, excuse me. We'll be, uh, we'll be creating a variety of classes. The classes we create will typically be based on uh, base classes within the Unreal Engine system. So they'll be based on libraries or actors or components or whatever it may be. And it is through this uh, uh, um, taking, taking of a base class and extending it using object-oriented techniques that we're able to add a great deal of power to these, uh, to these objects and to the game and give a lot of tools to the game designer. Uh, properties are a, are a feature within a class or within an object. Uh, 
they're uh, controlled uh, by the system through a through a macro called U property. We will get into the details of that. And basically, in C plus plus, when you create a property and you put a U property macro on it, you can tell it where it's editable. Uh, and it's fairly typical to be editable anywhere, uh, but you can control that and decide where that uh, uh, designer uh, can change a particular property. Functions are very similar. They use the U function macro and uh, you can determine where they're callable. Uh, they can be blueprint callable or they can be uh, internal to C++ only uh, and a variety of other features that you can do with, uh, with uh, functions in C++ and in Blueprint. Uh, events are, are very special. Uh, we'll be able to receive events from Blueprint. We'll also be able to send event uh, signals back to Blueprint. And uh, we'll even have this thing called a multicast event that we'll be looking at, which allows multiple subscribers and all kinds of stuff uh, that can be done with multicast events. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's delve into the code and get started. Okay, so here we are in uh, Unreal Engine's uh, launcher, Epic's launcher. And uh, here I'm using the 4.27.2 engine. So I'm going to start off by launching that. Okay, here's a new project uh, uh, window is up. And so we're going to come in here and select the games and uh, select next. And I'm going to do first person next. I'm going to switch this to C++. I'll leave it on maximum quality. You can set it to something lesser if you wish. I'm going to leave ray tracing disabled, desktop console mode, and no starter content. And then I'm going to... Uh, change the name of my project here to UE underscore CPP underscore tutorial underscore one. And then we will create project. Okay, so here we are in Unreal Engine. And uh, we're going to want to uh, set a few things up here. I'll go through a couple basic things with you. Depending on what IDE you want to use, you can go up here to edit, um, editor preferences. And in source code, you can pull this down. You can select what you want. I'm using Visual Studio Code. Uh, you can use whichever tool you prefer. Uh, <laughs> I've opened up this uh, content browser over here and you'll see that there's this folder called C++ classes and we have the name of our project here. This is where we're going to put our C++ classes and you'll note that it won't let you create a folder in here. That's fine. We're going to put all our, our C++ classes right here. So we're going to select, uh, we're going to right click in this window and select new class. And the very first one that we're going to do is going to be called a Blueprint Library. So I'm going to click on this Show All Classes, and I'm going to type in Blueprint Library. And this is the one that we want right here, Blueprint Library. Click Next. You'll notice that there's also an Achievement Blueprint Library and some other stuff. That's because I've got that plugin turned on. I'll show you how to turn that plugin on and the things we have to set up in our project to use it when we get to uh, doing uh, other things. Uh, the name of our class, we're going to call this Randomizer Blueprint library and if you've watched my other programming tutorials you know I, I tend to like to be explicit in naming things rather than using uh, uh, little abbreviations and stuff it makes the code a lot read more readable other people can understand they can read this say oh this is a randomizer blueprint library they if they know unreal engine they know exactly what it does so we're going to create this class then Okay, it has finished its uh, compilation process and generation process. And now we can uh, double click on this uh, uh, randomizer blueprint library right here and open it up in Visual Studio Code. <clears throat> and so here it is. Uh, this is our workspace in Visual Studio Code. And this is the header file. Uh, you know what? I'm going to close these out. Uh, 
interesting that those came up. Am I in the right workspace? Let me double check that. Because I have two open. Yeah, that's fine. This is the correct one. Okay. I also have, you know, I practice these things, rehearse them a little bit, make sure I know what I'm talking about before I uh, come in to do a, a tutorial. So I do have notes <laughs> and I have written the code and I do know it works. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is create, uh, well, we'll start by creating one function, okay? And we're going to use this macro called uFunction. And we're going to tell it that we want this function to be blueprint callable. Now, there's a way we can also apply some metadata to it. Uh, and the metadata that I want to apply here is called category. And we're just going to call this randomizer. So what this is going to do, and I'll show you in the uh, Unreal Editor, but when you pull down the list of possible functions, there's all these different uh, little folders that they're in or categories. That's what this category is. So we're going to create a static void function called initialize. And we're going to use this to seed our random number generator. So I'm going to, I'm going to just uh, copy uh, this part. Uh, well, I don't actually need this part. Um, what I actually need is this. I'll copy this because it's longer. We'll go over here and let's uh, create this function. It's void and it's called initialize. Boy, I'm having a hard time typing and it takes no parameters. So what we want to do is seed this and to seed it, we're going to use a built-in function that comes from the fmath package and the fmath package is loaded with the, uh, with the engine uh, files. So up here, you'll see core minimal dot H um, and uh, the, well, the ARB blueprint library is also loaded, but this core minimal dot H contains the header files for many functions, including fmath. And the function we want to call is called randinit, and we need to pass it a seed value. Uh, and that seed value is what we need to create. So to create it, we're going to get some information from our clock. So we're going to uh, say double seconds equals f time span. These uh, these are functions within uh, within the uh, API, and we can look up some of them, but. Uh, then we're going to call on f date time now and get ticks. And then get total seconds. So what's that doing? It's, it's creating a time span based on uh, the date and time right now in ticks. And then from the time span, what time, f time span returns, uh, it's getting the total seconds. So it's getting some big number of seconds as of right now. <clears throat> now we just need to convert that into an appropriate seed, which will be an int32 type called seed, which is what we've used here. This is the variable we're creating here. So we want to cast this value to int32. And the value we're going to cast uh, is going to be uh, cast first as int64 seconds. And then we're going to do a modulo on that and do it to int max. And this will just ensure that that number is within the range of an int32 uh, for this seed value. And it will put it into the seed. So the next function that we're going to create uh, is very similar. And uh, actually, we're going to create two functions. And, and I'm going to, instead of typing them, I'm going to copy-paste them into this header file. And then we'll, we'll work on the code. I'll explain it. So it's the same thing. It's a U function. It's blueprint callable. This is metadata that tells 
the Unreal Engine Reflection System, how to use this within the editor. So that uh, this gets, oh, by the way, when we compile this code, it gets hot loaded into the editor. So we don't have to shut down the editor and restart it or any of that kind of stuff. It's loaded immediately and we'll be able to see it when we go over there. It's in the category randomizer. We're going to have two functions. One's called dice roll. Uh, we're going to pass it the number of sides on a particular dice. I, most people are familiar with six-sided dice, but there are many different sided dice, especially if you've ever played like Dungeons and Dragons you know about multi-sided dice of different sizes and how many dice we want to roll. And what this function is going to do, it's going to roll that many random numbers between one and the number of sides and add them all up and return them. And probability check is just going to take a probability and return a bool. Uh, it's going to, you give it like 10%, it's going to, it's going to run a random number. If the random number is within 10%, under 10%, whatever you pass here, it'll return true. Otherwise, it'll return false. So if you've got a situation like uh, stepping on something, there's a 30% probability it'll kill you. Uh, when you step on it, it'll run this probability check. And if it hits below the 30% mark or whatever's passed in for the probability, then it'll return true and the system would then kill you. Otherwise, it would just let you walk on by. Uh, so it's just a probability check. So let's go over here to our library. Uh, well, first, let's uh, make sure I've got this. I need this. Oh, I've already got it over there. So let's just copy. Uh, let's just copy these two functions and we'll delete what we don't need. So I'll just paste these into here. We don't need this macro and we don't need uh, we don't need static because it's in the header file is static. But we do need to tell it what class it is part of. And that's this right here. I'm just going to copy paste. It saves a lot of errors doing this. I'm going to put this here and here. So what does dice roll do? Well, dice roll, uh, first of all, we need a uh, we need a result, int result. And to be pedantic, let's just initialize it to zero. And then we want to run a loop. So this is going to run this loop for each of the number of dice that we have. And we're going to say result plus equals fmath colon colon Rand range one and sides. Now, random range is uh, a random number generator based on this seed. We, we seeded it here. It runs the random number generator. It will produce a number inclusive of one and whatever this number is, sides. So if it's a six sided dice, it's going to produce a random number from one to six inclusive of one and six and then we'll just return the result and for this uh, check probability check here we'll just do this we'll go float num equals f math excuse me rand range from 0, 0.0 f to 1.0 f so we're going to get a number uh, between zero from zero to one inclusive of zero and one and then we will return that num that we rolled that we the the chance that we got is less than the probability so if it's a 10 percent chance and we roll a point well, actually you know we should make it less than or equal to the probability and if you're wondering about that fancy at less than or equal to sign it's really just two characters a less than and an equal sign I have a font loaded into Visual Studio code that turns it into uh, turns these double uh, symbols into a mathematical style symbol that's all I like it it makes it easier for me to read uh, and that's it. We've got our two, our three functions in C++. So let's hop back. Oh, well, first of all, I'm going to save all, file, 
Uh, interesting that there's no save all. It's just save. Okay, that looks like that saved everything. I sometimes forget I work with so many different tools. So let's go back over to Unreal Engine and hit compile. And hopefully I didn't make any mistakes and it actually compiles. Otherwise, we'll have a problem. It shouldn't take it too long here. Hmm. A little bit slow. Compile failed. Show log. Identifier blueprint callable. Why is that? You function. Blueprint callable. Okay, <laughs> you guys probably saw it and were screaming at the screen. Uh, it was a simple typo. It was called unfunction instead of u function. Uh, and now we can switch back over to here and hit compile. And it should compile fairly quickly. It should compile fairly quickly. <laughs> it was compiling fast just a few minutes ago while I was debugging it, and now suddenly it uh, wants to take a while. There we go. Compile completed. Okay, so we have these three functions, so now the question becomes, how would we use them? Well, we use them from a variety of places. Just for a simple example, I'm going to open up the level blueprint. and we'll dock it. And if I right click and do something like uh, uh, tick and uh, then come down here and do something like uh, randomizer, you'll see we've got this randomizer category and we've got dice roll and initialize and probability check. Well, we do want initialize, but we don't want to call it on tick. We want to call it on something like begin play so there's event be begin play. We can just call initialize there. And then on event tick, we could call uh, uh, dice roll. So let's call dice roll on event tick. And uh, let's print out the, uh, the value. Let's set the number of sides to uh, six and the number of dice to two. And we'll do a... Uh, Print string, plug that in there, get this return value, and then we'll go ahead and compile and save that. We'll come down here and just click save all, I think it's all saved, and we'll hit play. And there it is, it's generating these random numbers on the left. They're going by really fast, you can't see them, but uh, it's generating 2 to 12 uh, in there over and over and over again. So our C++ code is running. So that's just a basic kind of intro to, you know, how we go about setting up the system, how we create something in uh, C++ in the engine, and then how we call it. Uh, this is just an intro video. In the following videos, we're going to get into much more detail about many different aspects of this. We're going to create components. We're going to be com creating actors and we're going to be composing stuff together and making systems work. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.